Hello, hello, and welcome to Magical Witchy World TV. I am Star Ravenhawk. And I am Rhonda Allen, and we are happy to have you all here with us tonight. All right. And tonight, we are very proud to welcome Silver Ravenwolf to the Magical Witchy World TV. Welcome, welcome. Hold on one second while we share our little video. All right. Hello. Welcome, Silver. <laughs> so glad to have you here with us tonight. Thank you. I'm glad. Welcome and welcome. Well, before we get started, I wanted to go through and read through your bio so everyone has your background and knows what we're who we're meeting with tonight. <laughs> so Sil Silver Ravenwolf is an author. Braukarai, witch, chandler, quilt maker, gardener, artist, photographer, and grandmother. Her writing career began with how-to articles on, on art projects and fictional short stories with um, that blossomed into a full-time career in 1991 with her first full-length book, since that time, she's written over 23 books with Llewellyn Worldwide. She's been interviewed by the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, U.S. News and World Report, and various other newspapers and radio programs. She has also appeared in television news spots throughout the country and featured on PBS and A&E's biography. Silver, it is a pleasure to have you here with us tonight. Yay. Thank you so much for making the time. Yes, yes, yes. We so appreciate having you here tonight. And go on, Silver. We've been looking forward to this conversation with you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we really have. Okay. <laughs> So we wanted, I wanted to start with asking you, because we've had many people tell us that over the years, their, their titles of what they think of or they, what they call themselves has changed over the years. So I wanted to kind of find out, has that happened to you? Did you find that, you know, you went through different phases of it or anything like that? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just the old lady that does the magic, you know? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well said. <laughs> I understand entirely. That's what <laughs> I really, I do. I, I'm like right there with you. <laughs> so mm. when we look at that, so as you consider how you came into this, into this life, into this world that you've been living in, what brought you to the world of the witch? Would you say that you have a a particular moment or something that you can look back on and say, yeah, that was exactly when I came to that realization of who I am and what I should be practicing. Uh, that's a tough one. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. mm. I had a couple of things happen. Uh, I had a lot of fun when I was little, I really believed in magic. Um, and uh, actually, I think in the puppet book, I talked about a puppet that I made that uh, <laughs> you give your wishes and it would come true. And I just thought this was the best thing ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and then uh, when I reached up, my cousin kind of got into it and um, she said a few things about it. And mm -hmm. I'm really not sure. There was some. Um, I went through a bad time. I had written an article. If you, if I don't know if you read it or not, but I had a, a very abusive relationship, wow. and it's funny. Out of that abusive relationship, a witch yeah. was born. All right. And then that's that's what I can say about that. I needed to take right. back my own power. Yeah. Yeah. A witch emerged, yeah. like the phoenix rising. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Okay. So I wanted to ask you from your point of view, what does it mean to be a witch? Oh, you know, that's a loaded question these days. <laughs> yeah, loaded? That's why I said from your point of view, 
because we all kind of from our own point of view we all kind of go okay it means this to me so it's that's why we said you know what we, we don't want to put it as a a general statement we want everyone to kind of tell us what does it mean for them personally your point of view of it Okay, so this is just this is just for me, right? In other words, it's a no judgment zone because again, it's your yes. own personal point of view of where what you think it means to be that witch. And it's since it's such a personal thing, no one should be able to judge you on that other than you. So mm -hmm. you're you're like wide open to this. Okay, so to me right now at this stage in my life, I, I need to make that clear because I'm <laughs> so I think a little differently than I did 30 years ago. Right. Uh, I act Reasonable, differently. Yeah. My magic is different. Um, but I see it as for me, it is mm -hmm. a connection to nature in harmony. It's also the power of creativity, compassion, and love. When I open our um, healing circles, uh, one of the things I usually say is there is one power, which, which is the God and the goddess, which is perfect in truth, order, clarity, and mutual good. But then I call upon, I'll say, I hereby call upon, and I will ask for the energies of, compassion, love, hope, healing. And I will just go down the list and just pull in all the positivity that I can think of uh, that, that I may need or our circle members may need. Right. And so I've gotten mm -hmm. more into dealing with the energy, the energy of the earth, the energy of the people, the energy of what you're doing. And so that mm -hmm. to me is more witchcraft weird and although i've worked with the traditional and you know we've studied the traditional and we've held circles in the traditional and and that's all great and i love mm -hmm. it and it's a wonderful guideline for learning i also yeah. really at my age embrace the spontaneity yeah of it. yeah yes i, I think love that. I, I think that's i think we all kind of go through that wherever we started from yeah. years ago where, who yeah. and what we wanted to do, we were more on maybe on the magical side. And then as we got older and we changed and we went with it, we kind of, I think it's a kind of coming of age into that harmony of leveling out for yourselves in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's, it's a great way to to kind of state from your point of view, how what it means to you in the present moment and it's showing yeah. your growth. So that's great. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> So with that in mind, with that in mind and looking at how things have shifted through your experience over the years, how is magic today fitting in your life? How, how do you work with magic today as opposed to, say, 10, 20, 30 years ago? How, how is magic a part of your world or life now? It is a part of my life almost every single second. Um, I yes. live it. Yep. I live it. I exactly. breathe it. I do it. I embrace it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I do anything without it. Uh, yeah. But then right. again, magic is magic is the mind. Magic is embracing uh, the powers around you. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's that's well said. I, I was just is, saying is, the same it's thing. Not, it's not that thing that you do that you reserve for just a special ritual or a special moment or working or something. It's something that incorporates the entirety. That's the fullness of your life. Right. I see, and I, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because I think I find myself trying to teach that to my students all the time. This is not a fad. Yeah. This is not a. Um, a, a a quick fix or just only give me a spell or whatever this is your right. life your lifestyle right. your your yeah. the way you watch you know if give nothing against them which christians live it breathe it smell it taste it every day all day long right mm -hmm. we need to be that type of person and if you're not right. there as yet then you're still you know trying to get there 
because it's supposed to be part of your life from the time you wake up and as you go through your day all day long so it's it's wonderful to hear that because i don't think people yes. i don't think people kind of let people know that that's what it is it's not a fad it's not just right. black or whatever else it is it, it's literally your life it's who you are right and you it's know? okay to laugh it is yeah. okay to yeah. laugh <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. It is okay to be joyful. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, okay. So kind of segue in from uh, from that into um uh tell us about what what's important to you right now. Like what's the most not the most important, but what's important to you as as a witch right now? Um in the world that we are seeing play out before us right now. <laughs> I know there's a lot. I'm like, okay, I'm not That's a big one. there's like 50 different answers, you know, I could give you this. Uh, gosh. That's a big one. Um, well, for well, let's go for me. Let's right now, what I'm doing <laughs> is mm -hmm. I am concentrating on magic of the older pagan. Beautiful. That is what I'm concentrating on. Um, that is what, uh, it's the information that I'm gathering. That's what I'm working on, how to deal with, um, you know, certain things that happen to us as we get older. Yeah. And one of the main reasons why I'm doing this is because when I was young, <laughs> there was a day, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, when I was in my thirties, I was mm -hmm. going, where are all the elders? Mm. I mean, I'm traveling across the country and I'm mm -hmm. going, where are all the elders? I'm right. meaning like one or two, you know, and yeah. nobody really wanted to say too much. Some of them said, well, they're all burnt out. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. I could actually buy that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, and some of them... Um, we're also new in our own way. We're old, but right. our communities yes. are also new, newer than, you know, many of, you know, those around us. So mm -hmm. uh, we are going through some growing pains and we will continue to do so for quite yeah. some time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it's really important that the elders that we have um, help those if they can. Yeah, help those. Yeah. Uh, one, it's funny because it circled the other day. Somebody said something about a coven, and she said, "But, but my coven blew up, and then that coven <laughs> blew up, and then this yeah. other coven blew up." And I said, "Well, you know, one of the reasons why this is happening is because everybody wants to do the magic and the fun stuff, and and <laughs> and all those things which are marvelous, but nobody yes. wants to teach anybody how to run a coven." Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is so it's important. You said that. Yeah. 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 You know, what do you look out for? And I, there are books out there. It's not that there aren't. Yeah. But it's, mm -hmm. I think people, they, they think that's boring. Um, yeah. But yeah, what I think a lot of people don't realize because we have, I have the Black Forest tradition, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so during COVID, we set up an online uh, thing for just for Black Forest that we met often and we did healing magic constantly uh, and we found out what worked on zoom and what didn't <laughs> that yeah, was, right don't do yep. on zoom forget it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. no go but <laughs> but uh, we learned a lot of new things about um running a group that way that was that was different there were challenges right. so you know i totally lost the thread see i'm getting <laughs> 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 well, we were talking about what's important to you, yeah. with you, for you right now, and you were mentioning that one of the people at Coven, at, at Ritual yeah. the other night, Circle the other night, was saying that their coven blew up. Yeah, and yeah. Was, yeah, because yeah. It, they just didn't have the, they didn't have adequate experience or or training in how right. it works. It's not mean it doesn't mean they're bad people or stupid. It just right. means right. there's no one out there really that's going. Okay, this is how you do it. <laughs> Right, right. Kind See, of fall into oh it. <laughs> that's interesting that you said that because basically you're saying that 
in general, a lot of them don't do, they don't build the infrastructure with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And if they, mm -hmm. if they don't do that, then somehow they expect it to like osmosis to just kind of, you know, grow. And it's yeah. not if you didn't build the infrastructure and if you didn't give it some sort, because that's how human beings are. They need that yep. structure. They need, they need yes. certain things to guide them. And if you yes. just kind of go, oh, we'll just go la, 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 la. Of course, it's going to Im either implode or, or melt down or whatever it is, mm -hmm. because right. at some point, those that that lack of structure or infrastructure right will not work it will just fall apart right it makes right. sense it's nothing holding it together yeah. well that 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 segues pretty sweetly into this next uh -oh. question which <laughs> now that well well we're speaking about and this is a great topic yeah. the topic of working you know the um elders within the pagan community and building i i, I don't know if this is actually what you're working on but my question is you know what's let's talk about what's going on within the community for you right now what do you see happening within the pagan community whether it's working with gathering that information collecting the tales the stories the guidance the wisdom coming out of the elders in the community how what's going on within the overall community for you that stands out or or the thing that you would say you would like to see um, enhanced or areas that need for example, the elders gathering that information, yeah. that wisdom right. to share. You know, what's going on in the community for you right now that stands out? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know, it goes, well, it, I, I'm just going to say piggybacking off of the conversation we had before we actually went live tonight, the question of, you know, what's happening? What do I see? Or what do we see going on? What are the trends or things that are coming through um, the pagan community right now? And, you know, I was just mentioning, I think that some of the some of the broadening out of the, or the accessibility of just, you know, whether it is through the virtual realm or not, and we have it has its benefits, and it has its deter right. detriments, right. if you will. Right. But yeah, there may be some things that come out just with the fact that people are just more aware. Mm -hmm. There's more information, they have access, it takes away some of the stigma, even though some of it may be very superficial, there is some broader awareness. And I think that takes away some of the stigma. Um, that's just one thing in the community that I'm, I'm seeing, but nothing in nothing in particular for you that stands out at the moment. Well, Silver, I think it's an exciting time. Because you locked human beings down for about three years, two, three years. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so they became very self-focused on, I mean, this is a natural part of doing that, of, you know, doing that to people, you know, they're right. really yeah. self-focused. And so this is really the first yeah. summer where there's, oh my God, it's over. You, you know what yes. I mean? And so you've got... Uh, festivals that are jump popping up all over the place. You, you know, you've got, oh, just fun stuff. I mean, you have some stores are opening, some of them are holding events and, and you know, where they couldn't before. And right, so right. now you're seeing, and people are just so excited. You can tell that they've really missed the interaction, yeah. the community. You know, one of the hardest things for yeah. me during COVID was, mm. and we, our circle did meet at certain times, uh, when it was safe, but we still had with masks and gloves and, I mean, you know, and all that happy. The whole thing, blah, yes. blah. Uh, but the thing that was hardest for me was, and it's so funny because when I walked into the community, when the dinosaurs walked upon the earth, I was not, <laughs> Jeez. I was not, four times. <laughs> I was not used to the, uh, the embrace, the, the embracing of uh, pagans hug. You know, yes. yeah. dancing, you know, they're very um, touchy feely, touchy feely, yeah. personable. And and, for, and at first, I'm a Virgo. OK, so at first it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Seriously? you want to touch me? <laughs> right. so, but, yeah, you know, and you live this life, it, it becomes very much a part of you. And you hug everybody, and then COVID comes, and you can't touch anybody. You can't even hold hands to run energy. Right. So 
this actually made us much stronger because we learned how to do it, you know, with, okay, so we're just this. Like right. the virtual <laughs> hug or the virtual yes. hug exactly. or whatever. Exactly. Yes. You know? So in some ways it was very good for us. But in other ways, I'm seeing that there are groups that managed to hold together during COVID that are now breaking apart. Interesting. Uh, I am seeing that. I, I'm seeing yeah. people who hung on during COVID uh, because mm -hmm. it was there was somebody there to help you to talk to. You know, you there were people that you knew. Well, right. yeah. Now they're finding other interests. You know, they're breaking away mm -hmm. from that lifestyle and you know they're choosing a new one which is wonderful because that's how we grow right. so that's right right some of the things that i've been seeing uh, just with the behavior of people right. one of the things i did right. hear from somebody the other day is where are their manners <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> where are their manners? Well, I, went, I don't know <laughs> And and was that a question of were there were the manners different before COVID? Well, I don't know. You know, they like, were they had been, they had been somewhere yeah. they had been to a pagan function and they were just horrified. They said, "Where are their manners?" Wow, I don't know. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. I wasn't there. I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I I think maybe in a way it's it's okay. I I was a very much of a huggy kind of person myself before in the before times and then now that we're after but and it's not entirely after we're still living with covid um i think i know i have been very much still like that's this is my space stay away from my space and i'm still mm -hmm. very much i am not that huggy person anymore um people reach to shake my hand and i'm like i'm sorry i don't shake hands anymore not unless i've got my gloves on and i i just don't have my gloves or whatever i choose I'm choosing definitely don't don't shake my hand don't anything I'm cool just my hands are at my sides I'm not huggy I'm not I don't even want to try I just want to I'm happy to see you yay kind of a thing and I, I have this space I set up and I'm I don't want it invaded right and I've noticed that about myself which is the opposite of the way I used to be before the total see. opposite yeah are, are you guys experiencing that well, I have a little bit more reserved. I'm a little bit more reserved. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to just acknowledge we do have uh, several people here and several comments oh, okay, in the chat. Right, Aldo, okay. who is our tech guru god. Thank you, Aldo. And yay, happy <laughs> yeah, to see you in the chat. <laughs> yay. Um, but he did have a question for you, Silver, that I wanted to bring forward. Um, he asked if you could tell us how Black Forest Circle and Sanctuary started. <laughs> giggle, giggle. Yeah. Um, I was um, in a traditional witchcraft group and I was actually given a task to write some lessons mm. and those lessons actually became the foundation of Black Forest. I was really lucky because the trainers that I worked with, the people that I worked with, they all knew the old rules up one side and down the other. And that was a real gift to know and understand how the old guard worked. Right. Uh, and, uh, and what did work and what didn't work. I mean, you know, I mean, it was it was a really interesting experience. And I am just like one of these headstrong people of the world. And I thought, you know what? I can do this. <laughs> Excellent. Fabulous. I can do yeah. this. And we did. But but you know what? I did not do this they did this wow. yeah. because it was at the height of my career. I was traveling one end of the country to the other with my husband mm -hmm. and we were going, join Black Forest. This is what we do. This is how we do it. You know, those people yes. are still with us, many of them, not, not all, That's but many fabulous. are still with us. And it's those people. It was the group mind. 
mm-hmm. that actually is Black Forest and actually birthed Black Forest. Right. So that is that's fabulous. Wonderful. That's, that's wonderful. my answer. <laughs> <laughs> that is fabulous. Yeah, I want to also yeah. give a shout. Yeah. I want to give a shout to Brad. Hi, Brad, and hi, Rob. A couple of other members in the chat. So just wanted to acknowledge them as well. Thank you. That's Sorry cool. to interrupt you, Star. No, 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 no. That's great. I'm, I'm telling them thank you for their questions and and for being here with us live. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I wanted to kind of find out. Um, what would you like to see us as witches accomplish? Maybe I don't know. Um. Like, do you see certain things lacking that we need to improve on as witches that, you know, just around us in general? Oh, you might not like this answer. That's okay. Um, That's okay. I would like to see less ego and more respect. Bless. Yeah, I like agreed. the answer. I like. I am like there yeah. with you one hundred. I say that all the time. Exactly. So I'm like, yay. That is yeah. <laughs> you, no, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Ego has been. Tell us re- more about that. No, I I don't know what else to say. I'm I. Yeah. It was funny when I came into the craft. I thought. I was taught love is the bond, um, uh, honoring um, each other. Right. And I, and many, we all did. We have all gone through a period where we have looked at the community and we have gone, what is happening here? Right. Where is the love? What on earth happened to the honor? (laughs) Mm-hmm. I thought that was the, I was taught and, you know, and I held it close that that was the basic premise of what we were doing. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That cutting each other's throats was not part of the proposition. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well said. so um, mm. I would just like to see more respect as far as star, all the amazing things that you have done. And I would like oh, to see more okay. people tell you that, you know, mm-hmm. but they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wish they did. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It, it's, mm-hmm. and I think you're right about the ego part and all of it, because if we could give a little bit more respect to one another for all the things that we all do, yep. um, yeah, you know, yeah. Like and just compliment different. one another all the time about all the things, you know, I mean, without Aldo, we couldn't do all certain things without Rhonda. That's I couldn't certain. run certain things. So even though people see me as the face of Witches Fest, I'm like, with all the people that behind me that helps without them, I, there's no way I could possibly put out Witches Fest. And so I honor them and I respect them for all that they do. And, you know, I'm not saying ego is wrong because I think ego plays a part in some form or another. I'm just saying there's a bit more respect with that or maybe treat ego as a joke in a sense where we laugh at ourselves kind of a thing. And maybe then we would be able to move on from that ego because if it becomes too much, yeah, it it does a lot of damage. Yeah. Meltdowns causes a lot of the, 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 you know, the the groups to, to malfunction and all of the different things. Yes, that could. Yes. Well, shifting the topic a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> just wanted to get into. So what are the things that you're focused on doing right now? What's the work? What projects do you have going on? What are you focused on at this point? Uh, personal or craft or what are we talking? <laughs> In general, craft, personal, what have you. Yeah. Uh, okay. well, you like to share. Well, I've got a big basket of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just put my garden in. Um, oh, awesome. so that's, yes. you know, we're, we're on a roll there. Um, I have yes. an ongoing battle with the trash pandas and the chippies, but, oh um, my gosh, we're yes, good. <laughs> we're good. Uh, so that's, that's one of the things that I, I truly love is, is the communing with nature part. That's just amazing to me. 
Um, I'm also yeah. working on things for the older pagans. I've got that some, you know, one of my little hoppers. Okay. But then the Excellent. thing that is yes. closest to my heart, and I never thought so because I really hate dollies, is I mm. make, I make these magical dolls. I I make oh, that's yeah. awesome. I make be boodles. <laughs> That is fabulous, though. <laughs> and I stuff them with herbs, and they have magical charms in them, and and um, yeah. And I hope that they last long before I do, after I go gone. <laughs> <laughs> that is fabulous. But, Those are special. Yeah, I, I just made special. one for a museum in Switzerland. So I oh, just nice. see. This is what I mean. Nice. Those are special. Yeah. That is fabulous. That's that's some, that is excellent. <laughs> that's some of the stuff. Yeah. And I, and I know, um, I'm kind of segueing a bit, but I know that we mentioned before we came on the show, like live, that is, we mentioned about events coming up. Um, I don't recall if you had entirely said what was coming up, but do you have any events or, or, or like that you have coming up in the near future or anything like that? Well, I will be down in uh, New Orleans again this year. Oh, yay. Yep. That's Tell awesome. Him. Fabulous. Um, and so I'm really excited. I just I had such a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it I was just, it I was wonderful it. meeting you there. It was. Oh, it was so great. And I was and I didn't get to go to all the seminars I wanted to go to either. <laughs> yeah. It's like darn. <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping maybe to, to go to some more of them. And then every year I run, I know you'll laugh. I call it Granny Camp. <laughs> 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 oh, that's just awesome. <laughs> and Black Force members come in Trinity. from all over uh, the United States. And uh, we just had two in from Italy, but they're not coming to my granny camp because they already came Aww. to something else. But uh, and uh, it's a three day thing that I do for the Black Force members. And that takes mm -hmm. up a lot of my time. And we we do all kinds of really fun things. Like last year we had divination tables. So you're let's say Rhonda, you're really good, like you said, a tarot, right? So you would have a tarot exactly. table, and somebody else would have one with stones, and somebody else with a pendulum, and you just go around like three minute reads. That's it. And people just yes. could walk around and experience all these different forms of divination. So Beautiful. and we we had a big circle, we had a, a bonfire here. So I mean that's that was like coming home, you know. That, that <laughs> is like wonderful. Fun. It, does it like fun, really, yeah. really does. Yeah. Well, I know we have uh, again. We have your information scrolling across the screen. But are are there any other places aside from the website? Your website, which is again for anyone who doesn't know, Whisper Magic with a K, whispermagic.com. Any other locations or sites where they should be able to locate you, or is that the best? You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, Excellent. I'm on Twitter. I, I do astrology every morning. I do it, you know, like as much as you can fit on Twitter, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fabulous. So, um, so that you can find me there. You know, all this major social media stuff. So. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Cannot thank you enough for joining us tonight. Yay. Thank you again for giving us your time and sharing as much as you have. Yeah. It was marvelous. Woo -hoo! Yeah, this was such a pleasure. We were so looking forward to it and very, very happy to have you here tonight with us. Thank you. Yes. And well, thank you, Silver. And now a word from our sponsor. All right. Yes. Well, here we are at astrology time, Star. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm going, okay, we have got the back. astrology. It is actually pretty it's good. good we we haven't had it in a long time. And yes. the last few things we've had was on this on the 16th of this month and on the 17th, we had um where Jupiter um uh was what is it, conjuncting with um 
uh, with uh, Jupiter, and Jupiter entered Taurus on May 16th, and then, um, and it's going to stay there until um, May 16th, 2024. And then yes. we're going to have where you guys could um, with just consider the fact that on the 17th, Jupiter um, conjunct with, what was that? With Pluto, I believe, right? Mm. No, sorry, Uranus. Uranus, mm. okay. with the North Node. And it's going to be there until July. So it could, it's going to play a lot of part in um, making us more, um, I guess some people would say, um, capable of greed and hoarding, but it mm -hmm. depends on how you want to work it. Um, it will have you, if you can, um, while Jupiter is there in, in Taurus, we work on your grounding, um, self-sufficiency, mm -hmm. abundance, and happiness. Um, you may yeah. find that maybe patience is a virtue kind of a thing, kind of work on your patience. We need more gr um, grounding and pleasure, self-sufficiency and sustainability. So you might find that you could um, work on things like that. And don't mm. don't undervalue things that make you feel good because feeling good attracts more good things. Um, it's also, it's ready, um, you're ready to settle on one or two things of your dreams. So if you have any dreams mm -hmm. that you would like to work on right now, this is a very good time to cultivate some of that so that it could last for a long time and in coming into the future. Um, and Rhonda, you'd like to take off from there? Well, yes. Well, Taurus, well, in while in Taurus, excuse me, Jupiter will join forces with Uranus for a couple of months with the North Node until July. So Jupiter and Taurus will bring more clarity around topics connected to um your Taurus house and also more opportunities to materialize what Uranus and the North Node have been trying to initiate in the last couple of years. You may already feel the pull of the unknown, that spark of curiosity, but now you will have the confidence to pursue those wild dreams and opportunities. Um, Jupiter and Taurus is your wild card for 2023, but keep in mind that at the time of the ingress, Jupiter will exactly square Pluto at zero degrees Aquarius. Although the winds of change will definitely blow, if you have a choice, wait for a few weeks until Jupiter goes out, out, uh, out of the square orb with Pluto and starts applying a nice sextile to Saturn in Pisces before doing anything too impulsive or too crazy. At a mundane level, Jupiter and Taurus will have you focus on your resources, financial markets, and innovation. Um, since Jupiter is applying a conjunction to Uranus, AI and, and innovative financial solutions are expected to grow and proliferate. So some of the highlights of the Jupiter in Taurus transits are Jupiter conjunct the North Node at two degrees Taurus on June 1st, so just a couple days from now, and Jupiter sextile Saturn on June 19th. All in all, this predicts a very successful alignment of these celestial bodies. That will bring success and prosperity as well as unwavering faith in your chosen path. So let us rejoice. Let's celebrate <laughs> on May 16th, abundant Jupiter. And well, we did that. This glittering long transit brings material blessings and increased capacity for pleasure, a stronger desire for luxury and a renewed sense of faith in our values. All right. And then yeah. I'm kind of going to go back a bit on some of what Jupiter, it, while Jupiter is in Taurus and being squared with Pluto in Aquarius, mm. I want you to keep in mind that Jupiter squares Pluto for every five to six years. So one way you have to look at this transit is a change um, in ideals or expectations for yourself. Because Pluto transforms anything it touches and Jupiter can be seen as our path or our way through life. So here's the challenge I want you to th think of. Look at what you've been doing for and what um, what, look at what you've been doing for and what or where it, it's getting you. Has anything improved? There's no sense in putting energy into something that simply doesn't fit or work. As people would say sometimes, um, doing the same thing over and over, but a different result does not mean that you should be doing that. So think yeah. about it wisely. 
and put effort into what you can what you can more easily achieve empower yourself to succeed by getting out of your old ruts and getting more bang for your metaphorical buck but literal buck. Yeah. metaphorical yeah. and literal buck and, <laughs> yes yeah we need all of that yeah. so some of the things to consider in this period well let's go back well a, a prime example equal pay for women so this the last time we saw this cycle was in 1941. And in Australia, the ACTU pushed for equal pay for women, women because they were going, because they were doing men's jobs. Um, in 1941, that was also the year of Rosie the Riveter. So women were forced to work in male careers in 41 because their husbands were at war and they needed to earn a wage. Somebody needed to be earning an income. So as every Jupiter cycle moves the story forward, we would expect governments in several countries to introduce legislation for equal pay, pushing it forward through 2024. So we, we're looking to see that happen in this period as well. Um, another thing that could also come forward is the idea or the notion of universal credit or one world currency. This is another topic that is the, the, the um, energies are prime, let's put it that way. We will see universal basic income introduced into several countries. It's called UBI for short, and it is an obvious outcome of this Taurus conjunction, but also Pluto in Aquarius, the great leveler of rich and poor. Um, one world currency will also be here for the same reason. This is an unusual radical historical cycle. It won't be Bitcoin. Expect something different, a different type of um, uh, digital coin, what have you. We will also see tax reform. This is a potential, this is another energy-wise prime for tax reform um, by May 25th, 2024, which stops the greed at the top. Finally, there will be money laundering arrests, which result in the seizure of billions of dollars or pounds worth of assets to, um, that will benefit all of us. Okay. Star. Kind of spread that wealth around to everybody else and not just hold it at the mm -hmm. top, right? Okay. Right, exactly. So I want you guys to check your personal birth charts. And mm -hmm. whether it doesn't matter your gender, if you have anything in your birth chart at 21 or 22 degrees, Taurus, you will profit or gain from whatever you invest in. If you take the opportunities that is, which can come out of the blue, you will profit, okay? Mm -hmm. The biggest and best financial opportunities and the most liberating new changes are coming. From when we passed May 16th, from May 16, 2023 until May 25th, 2024, Jupiter and Uranus will both be in Taurus, which is the finance signs. So it's kind of taking you through all of that and it's telling you this is your profit time. We've lost a lot of money throughout certain times in the past throughout the pandemic. This is kind of reviving some of that for us. This is a rare money cycle for you. So when you will be given opportunities to benefit enormously from whether it's sudden changes around you or not, don't muck it up. It's all on you. So you have to make the choices and kind of take the chances and run with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, with Jupiter in Taurus squaring Pluto in Aquarius, from when we watched May 17th when it's um, it squared off, one way to, um, uh, to to prepare for it is to have Pluto transforming everything further for you, money-wise. Allow Pluto to do what it does, mm -hmm. because Jupiter gives it makes it come in with that um, financing, but the Pluto transforms it and and, and expands it for you. So here's the, another challenge that I want you guys to think of is, is there any sense for you to keep on, you know, doing over and over that same thing? We mentioned that before. So again, keep that in mind, okay? You, mm -hmm. You're preparing all of these financial times for yourself. I want you guys to get out of there, do something for yourself. If you have to start a new business, whatever it is that you're trying to do for yourself, get out there, do it, put forward the effort. And please don't realize you have to do to put in the work. You cannot yes. just sit back and say, oh there, yeah, you know what I mean? It's gonna just happen because Pluto is doing whatever and Jupiter is doing whatever. No, it helps you if you put in the work. Okay, so please yes. put in the work. That's the challenge for you, which for a lot of people, that's a big challenge. All right? Yes. So please yes. people, do, the, do what you've got to do, okay? All right. I Take hope you guys enjoyed the that. energy. Excellent. Yeah. 
hold one second. It's time for Tarot. Okay. All righty. So I have my, my trusty witch's tarot deck. <laughs> <laughs> and I am working with my trusty Rider Waite Smith deck. Okay. So I'll let's take see my what glasses we out got of my mouth. Because of the whole Jupiter, Taurus, Aquarius. Let's see what we've got. We'll pull out one card for that. All yes. right. And let's see what plays out for us. I don't have a jumper this time, so I'll go with what's there. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So, Rhonda, what? What? Do you want to go first? Do you want me to yes. go first? <laughs> <laughs> I am pulling my card right now, literally. Okay. And what do I have? Right. <laughs> the Hanged Man. All right. The Hanged Man. So here we have this major arcana card, and the Hanged Man is a card that I know many people look at this and go, "Okay, so why?" Why would I be, in, why is this a positive? I look at the hanged man and I recognize what? That this is the observer. This is the one taking time out to see what are my opportunities? What did Star just say? Now's the time to see how you can best benefit from these, the financial opportunities that this period may offer us. So we do the work and we take advantage of those opportunities. This is the figure who says, I am going to take the time to see my opportunities. What, even if I need to turn myself upside down, this is the time you take, you, you dedicate the what do i want to say you invest in your own potential that's what this person is doing they're taking the time out to say i need to see the fullness of my possibilities and i will self-sacrifice in preparation for the change that's coming i'm taking myself out of the game to observe everything and see what potential opportunities exist ahead yeah so that for me is the lesson that's a that's a big lesson yeah. because it is a major arcana card yeah. It's saying be observant, All be right. prepared. That, that okay. was on the money, girl. Okay, <laughs> I have got the Ace of Pentacles. Oh my goodness, it? stop. Yes, the Ace of Pentacles. <laughs> and if you look at it, this one has to me everything, like the pentacle is right in the middle there all of it around it, a greenery and fertile and, and everything that's abundance and then golden on yeah. top and everything that's basically saying, if you really take the time to invest in who you are as that human being, mm -hmm. as, as Silva said earlier, take the ego out of the way, take everything else out of the way and really think about where you want to project and take yourself. Mm -hmm. There's so much out there for you. So many things that you can start that fertility with so that the growth mm -hmm. can be there, whether it's slow or not, that growth will happen. You will profit if you do it properly. Yes. If you yes. take the time to believe in who you are and see all the possibilities. I'm that kind of person that's um, glass half full at all times. I don't care if they say yeah. one half of it is a different thing. I'm saying, but yes, but I can still plant. I can still um, have that business take another way. I can still... Um, add other things to whatever I've got already so that I can see yeah. other potential growth. And weren't we talking about that with Magical Witchy World and all the other wonderful things we want to do with it? Growth mm -hmm. in every way that we can think of. And it doesn't just mean just um, in the physical monies coming at you, but growth in general for yourself yes. personally as a human being, for your business, for your monies, for your family, for your relationships yeah. that you have all of it and i see so much potential there that i'm sorry Absolutely. people come on let's do it we are doing that's it. I, so beautiful. I love the fact yes. that it's pentacles so it's I know, earth right? taurus it's earth it's all it's all aligned yes. it all everything is connected yes. <laughs> that's what i want to say that is awesome yeah well and so on that note let us introduce you to what is coming up next week we have, well, actually, since the next week, we have a special show. We have a special show tomorrow. tomorrow night. Yeah. Tomorrow evening. We are going to have, who are we having tomorrow evening? Alexander Cabot. 
Yes. So Alexander Cabot will be with us tomorrow evening, Saturday, May 27th. So please, you all, join us again at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock Eastern. We will be back here with Magical Witchy World TV. And Alexander Cabot is tomorrow night. Cannot wait. We had to reschedule him, so we cannot yeah. wait to have him. Thank you all so much yeah. for taking the time to join us tonight. Yes. Silver Raven. We want to thank her for being with us tonight. Enough. We had such a wonderful oh time with her and all that knowledge that she shared with everyone. And again, all of you that are live with us in the chats and everything else, we appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Oh, and don't forget to check out our other shows that's coming up, the Pagan Ninja playlist. And I guess that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, right? YouTube. That's YouTube, right. Like, else. share, and hey. like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening, everyone. We'll be back here tomorrow. tomorrow. Same yes. time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Have a great night, everyone. Take care.